Jesus, our beautiful, powerful, holy, almighty God, we thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people. We thank you for your sacrifice on that cross that purchased the forgiveness of sins, that ushered us into the grace of God, that our lives can be flipped when we place our faith in your precious name. Jesus, we ask that this morning that you speak to us in a new way, that God, where we have walls built up, that you would break down. And where hearts have grown cold, Jesus, may you come in and warm up their heart. And God, I pray for those that see the impossible. May they see you, Jesus, all powerful, that you can accomplish the impossible in their life. Lord, may I decrease and may you completely and utterly increase and may people see you alone this morning. It's all in your name we pray. Amen. This morning we started a new series called Flipped. And we're looking in this new series about the Sermon on the Mount. And you might say, Brad, what's the Sermon on the Mount? It's Matthew, chap- Matthew chapter 5, verses chapters chapters 5 through 7, and in there, Jesus gives a, a, a beautiful body of work to show us what the citizens of God's kingdom should look like. He shows us what it means for us to behave in ways that honor him and bring him all the glory. And this morning, we're going to look at that Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5 through 7. But here's what I want you to understand before we dive in. In no way is Matthew chapter 5 through 7 a list of, when I hear this, I must go home and do all of these things. These are not a list of things for you to put on a to-do list. What this is, is Jesus saying, this is the grace that God will give you in order to live in a way that honors me. And so when you hear these words of Jesus this morning, don't sit back and say, I must work this in my life. No, no, no. Jesus is saying, as you trust him every single day and rely upon his grace alone, this is what God's grace will accomplish in your life. This morning, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to speak to you Jesus' words from Matthew 5, verse 7. So this morning, I want you to imagine that you're on a hillside at the Sea of Galilee, The wind is blowing. You can hear the waves of the sea. And here's what Jesus has to say to me. Here's what Jesus has to say to you. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, because they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, because they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, because they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, because they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, because they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, because they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sakes, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven.
For so they persecuted the prophets who came before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how will its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown away and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, if anyone relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, they will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Truly, I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the people of old, you will not commit murder. And anyone who commits murder will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift before the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then go and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court. Less what less your accuser hands you over to the judge and the judge to the guards and you be put into prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you will not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks after a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away because it is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away because it's better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you will know what you have sworn what you have sworn. But I say to you, take an oath, take no oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say simply be yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. 
But if anyone would slap you on the right cheek, turn to him the other cheek also. And if anyone would sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat as well. And if anyone would force you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you. And do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you will love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you only love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Beware of practicing your righteousness in front of other people in order to be seen by them because then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the street corners that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to stand in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases like the Gentiles, for they think that because of their many words they will be heard. Do not be like them, because your heavenly Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust and where thieves do not break in and steal. Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? 
No one can serve two masters because he will either hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat or what will you drink nor about the body, what will you put on? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of much more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one hour to his span of life? And which one of you, and why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. They neither toil nor spin. Yet even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. So if God clothes the grass of the field... Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What will I eat, or what will I drink, or what will I wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, because tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Judge not that you be not judged, because with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and the measure with which you use it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrites. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give to dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Because everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. Or which one of you, if your son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then who are evil know how to give gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, because this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Every healthy tree bears good fruit, but a diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. So every tree that does not bear fruit is 
cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And on that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded upon the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And when Jesus had finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their scribes. Just a moment, the worship team is going to lead us in a song of worship. And all we ask this morning is that if God spoke to you this morning in some way, maybe it was an encouragement for you, maybe something Jesus spoke to you, I needed that this morning. Maybe there was something inside of you that when, when Jesus' words were spoken, it convicted you and said, man, I need to confess this. Or maybe there was something in Jesus' words that says, man, I love you even more, Jesus. We want to let you know that the altars will be open during this time. God is nudging you to pray. God is nudging you to praise. If God is nudging you to worship, if God is nudging you to repent and to confess, the altars are here. We have counselors here for you. Just let Jesus work his work of grace in your heart. Let's pray. Jesus, your words are powerful. Jesus, your words are the opposite of what we want to do. God, you challenged each of us to live as the citizens of your kingdom. And God, we recognize that we can't live that way on our own. We need your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, your power. So God, I pray that we would do as you have called us to do in this moment of reflection, in this moment of confession, in this moment of praise. May we be obedient to your word. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen.